Listeners on the TBC radio network, we begin with some breaking news this afternoon. A man was just shot dead in St. Helena. According to preliminary police reports, the man who is yet to be identified was killed while driving along Madras Road. Reports indicate that a child was in the car, but they were unharmed in the incident. Now, we'll have much more on this story as it unfolds, as it develops, and as we get it. A child is fighting for her life in hospital after she sustained a head wound when gunmen shot and killed her parents in Claxton Bay this morning. Her older sister was able to run away and call for help. Our team of Ivan Tulsi and reporter Sasha Wilson are on the ground. Sasha? Well, to the back of us is the home where Asha George and her boyfriend Devon Drayton were fatally shot in their bedroom just after midnight. Also injured in the attack was George's 12-year-old daughter who suffered a head wound. Her condition is said to be serious. George's other daughter, who is 14 years old, managed to sneak out of the house and ran to a neighbor's home for help. Police tell us that the attack was carried out by two, at least two gunmen. While a motive is still being investigated, we understand that about five years ago, George's then boyfriend was also murdered. We will keep you updated as more information comes to hand. All right, thank you very much, Sasha. We appreciate it. We do understand as well as Sasha just pointed out that the police are yet to find a motive for these murders. Meanwhile, police have not officially identified the body of the woman found in the Queen's Park savannah on Monday evening. CNC3 News understands that while information circulating on social media suggests that the victim is a 24-year-old woman from Diego Martin, this has not been verified by the police as the process is still ongoing. Homicide officers will be facilitating a viewing today. The semi-nude corpse in the vicinity of the cricket nets located close to the paddock of the Queen's Park savannah. Investigations are continuing. Dozens of Santa Cruz residents came out for a peace walk in their village on Tuesday evening. Joining their voices with their neighbor and cricket legend, Brian Charles Lara, who spoke out on Sunday about the crime surge in the once sleepy village. The last week, three men were shot dead in a bar in Santa Cruz and residents say enough is enough. Here's more from reporter Carissa Lee. They say the only thing necessary for evil to triumph in the world is that good men do nothing and the Santa Cruz residents refused to let that happen amid the current crime situation in the village, where at least seven people have been murdered for the year so far, with a triple murder recorded last Wednesday. Wearing white, residents came out on Tuesday evening and walked for peace in their community. We are going to declare today that this community belongs to the Lord, and God is in charge of Santa Cruz. Amen. Amen. On Sunday, cricket legend and Santa Cruz native Brian Charles Lara spoke out on the crime situation in the village. One of the victims of the triple murder was his childhood friend. And while Lara's voice gained national and regional attention, all the way from India... So we will leave The residents hope theirs reach those who reside in the sleepy village between Marval and San Juan. Carissa Lee, CNC3 News. A Miyaro magistrate has denied bail to a man and his common-law wife accused of raping their teenage relative. The teenager was reportedly at the couple's home in Guayaguayari on March 13th when they invited her to smoke with them. The couple took the teen into a room, locked the door, and restrained her before sexually assaulting her. The teen was able to escape after another relative came to the house looking for her. The couple was only arrested this week as they fled the house after the teen escaped. They were charged with rape, grievous sexual assault, false imprisonment and incest and are due to reappear in court on June 6th. The police are advising members of the public to take threats seriously and to make a report. Acting Assistant Superintendent Rajesh Lal on CNC3's The Morning Brew today said, it is important to document what happened not just by the police but also by the victim. On the first occasion, they send you a threat. Make your report. Always make a report and demand your official receipt mm -hmm. from the police officers. 
Get the number, rank and name of the officer, take any report. Go home and make your personal notes. If you had to put it in a notebook, a copy book, a diary, the date, the time, the report, the offence allegedly or the offence occurred. Well, ASB Lal added that if the threat came via a text message, the victim should screenshot it and he also gave the assurance that the police are taking reports of threats very seriously. We go indicate to individuals that what you're doing is an offence, you're threatening that person's life, you, anything happens to this individual, guess what happens? You could be one of the main or the first suspects. Yeah. Acting ASB Lal rather said if the victim is contacted by the person who threatens them, they can be arrested. Now, Tobagonians have one week to remove their derelict vehicles from the public space. This is according to Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Farley Augustine, who said it is one of the ways they plan to fight crime on the island. In a joint media briefing with the police and defense force on Wednesday, Augustine said they will be taking a hard approach with this measure, as they have reason to believe that criminals are using these old vehicles to hide contraband materials. This is creating a security problem. One, it is constricting roadways. Secondly, they have found that many people are using, well, many criminals are using this, these same derelict vehicles as storage spaces, as hiding spaces. That it is also a public health issue. Meanwhile, Acting Commissioner of Police Collis Hazel said the police will work extensively to curb crime on the island that recorded six murders for the year so far. Hazel said while they take action, Tobagonians will also need to do their part, especially parents. Be focus of the people who you encourage in your space. Parents are allowing firearms and ammunitions together with drugs in their homes and sitting comfortably by. Hazel said his door is always open and shared his number with Tobagonians. They can also contact the THA's anonymous tip hotline at 211. Opposition leader Kamala Prasad Bisesa has officially sent a letter to the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, asking for a full investigation into the Brent Thomas matter. During this week's UNC Monday Night Forum, Prasad Bisesa announced her intention to write to Motley, and today via a press release confirmed that she did. The opposition leader said while the court judgment by Justice Devendra Rampasa detailing what he called a shameful blot on our nation, no information has been forthcoming from the government or state agencies explaining how such an incredible breach of the law could have happened. She said to date the Prime Minister has denied any knowledge of this illegal action, but that the exercise to get Thomas from Barbados to this country was carefully coordinated and could not have been sanctioned without the approval of the highest offices in the land. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, is traveling to Washington, D.C. today, where he is scheduled to attend Howard University's 155th Commencement Convocation Ceremony. Last week, the university announced that Dr. Rowley will be the recipient of an honorary doctorate degree from their institution. Now, the ceremony will take place on the main campus of Howard University's Upper Quadrangle at 10 a.m. on Saturday. President of Howard University, Dr. Wayne Frederick, said that the 2023 honorees are among the leaders in their respective fields, in no small part due to their commitment to our collective humanity and building a better society for everyone. He said truth and service have been major elements to their lives, both personally and professionally. Minister of Finance, Kamimbert, will act as Prime Minister until Dr. Rowley's return. A truck driver is dead after his vehicle crashed into a house in Maracas Gardens, St. Joseph, on Wednesday. The victim has been identified as 38-year-old Lasana Chalmers of Phase 4 La Hokita. According to reports, just before 5 on Wednesday afternoon, the dump truck driver was descending the hill when he lost control of his vehicle and crashed into a two-story house. No one was home at the time. However, parts of the kitchen and dining room were damaged. Police and fire officers responded, but there were no signs of life when they removed him from the truck. According to the National Carnival Commission, CPAP workers who kept the city clean during the carnival season may soon receive their payments. The commission has also apologized for the delay and said the NCC, 
and said to the NCC the payment was finalized yesterday after it was initially interrupted. CNC3 News understands that the NCC entered into a contract with CPEP for ground maintenance and janitorial services for a 20-day period, and the commission was supposed to make a 50% down payment which would cover salaries and other overheads. CPEP workers were praised during the carnival season for their hard work, which was almost three months ago. Time now for a quick break here on the Midday News. When we come back, we'll have sports for you. Stay with us. Ladies, get ready to win up to $5,000 in cash and prizes with Vitabiotics Mother's Day Shop and Win promotion at Pennywise Cosmetics. Purchase any Vitabiotics product and enter for your chance to win. Promotion ends May 16th, 2023. See Facebook for details. Celebrate Mother's Day with Magical Expressions Limited. This I Promise You collection available from May 2nd. We are the largest local importer and distributor offering the widest range of beautiful flowers at the most affordable prices. Call us at 701-6488 or visit our website to order. The Premier League on Sea Sports just got better. Win your share of up to 15,000 US dollars when you play CPIC. Predict the winning teams, final scores, and score difference, and a piece of the pie could be yours. Compete for the title of CPIC champion and put your Premier League knowledge to the test. With millions up for grabs, top the table and take home the cash. Visit seasports.win today and log your predictions. Sea Sports, the best way to see sports. On Caribbean Passport, it's time to tour St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Planning a destination wedding? Well, Barbados is more than a beach getaway. And let's enjoy delicious cuisine from Chef Chris De La Rosa, right here on CNC3, Sunday at 7.30 p.m. New specs, new vision at Seaview Optical. Get single vision clear lenses in frame $2.99. Buy focal clear lenses in frame $3.99. Single vision transition lenses in frame just $9.99. So much more offers in store. Only at Seaview Optical. Affordable eye care for everyone. This weekend's match is Manchester City versus Leeds at 10 a.m. Don't you miss it. Welcome back. Taking a look at the top sport story in sport. The changes in the Caribbean Premier League continue as out of favor West Indies fast bowler O'Shane Thomas is on the move again. The towering fast bowler who made his debut in the CPL with the Jamaica Talawas in 2016 and played with the Barbados Royals since 2021 has now signed with the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots this season. Thomas has taken 42 CPL wickets from 33 matches since his debut. Now let's take another quick break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. My parents' generation grew up with Royal Castle from the first restaurant in 1968 when that distinctive, tempting aroma hit the air. Like never before, fried chicken with a special blend of local seasonings and a one-of-a-kind flavor down to the bone. Today, Royal Castle still have that same delicious taste and I love it too. And the kids, they have more to enjoy. For me, the castle is more than just nice food. It's we own, part of me and you, and is the real flavor of TMT. Cash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use NCash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on NCash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Download the app and create your wallet today. Well, thank you so much for joining us for a look at the day's developments here on the Midday News. We'll have much more for you on these stories in our major newscast at 7 p.m. Have a great day.